All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Alex, this is the Single Track Sampler, and today I'm here on a camping weekend with my good friend Daniel. What's up? Daniel <clears throat> and I have uh, been mountain bike buddies for a long time now, and he's worked in the outdoor industry for a long time, but has recently taken on a nine to five job. With that, he wanted to make a sort of vehicle that allowed him to maximize his weekends. So today we're gonna tour his Toyota Tacoma that he has outfitted for ultimate uh, weekend adventures. So Daniel, take it away. How long have you had this again? You had a Jeep before this. Yeah, I had a Jeep Cherokee before this, which I loved. Like the four-wheel drive and stuff was great. So this is definitely like a downgrade as far as off-road capability, but- as as Functionality. Fuel, yeah, functionality, fuel economy, like this makes so much more sense. Also, it's a Tacoma, which is known to last like 250,000 miles or better. Yeah. So I wanted something that was super reliable. I wanted to go out west on like my vacation weekends and stuff. <clears> there were like weeks off that I could get. Back in May, I finished grad school. We went through Texas out to like New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and then back across the Midwest. Yep. And every weekend it goes to North Carolina, it seems like. <laughs> Anything special about the actual car itself? I mean, as far as the, the truck itself, it's a standard Tacoma. Okay. This is the, the Desert Pre-Runner Edition, which means it's a two-wheel drive, but it's got a, a locking rear diff, and then it's also got like skid plates and stuff underneath. So okay. like, while it's not a four-wheel drive, I can still get like pretty rugged with it and not okay. have to worry about it. Cool. My tent is actually right here in front of it. I thought it was pretty funny juxtaposition. So this is currently my camping setup outside of my car, as, as most everyone on the channel knows by now. Looking to change that soon. But um, I, you know, and I'm looking to get into a van, but I like talking to people that have things other than vans because van life is such a popular thing now that some people might get the idea that that's how you have to do it. But we got Daniel here to prove us otherwise. He has, well, how long was that trip, like a month? Yeah, it was like three weeks. He's done like three weeks in the back of a tr his truck with his girlfriend and it's just perfect. It's amazing what you can do with such little space and it's so cool. Yeah. So let's take a look. Yeah, it's got the kayak <coughs> rack up top for kayaks and uh, I have a shower that I can mount up here that's like a yeah. solar heated shower. But that's one cool thing that he doesn't have right now. It's actually, can you explain it though? Yeah, so it's a big uh, like four inch PVC pipe that just mounts right up here and then I've got fittings on it to pressurize it using like a bike pump or whatever you want to do. Uh -huh. And it just heats up from the sun, right? Yeah, it's a black pipe so it heats right. up from the sun and then the hose comes out the front and I, I've got poles like inside of these things so uh -huh. I pull the caps off, pull the poles out and we put a little tarp up around us. It's so, it was, it's so right clever. There. Yeah, it's so nice. Such a simple setup. Yeah. All right, so here we are at the back of the truck <clears throat> and uh, you'll see it's, a very simple setup. It's the back of the truck, but it's it's highly functional, and that's that's really what we're all about. Some people, I think, get caught up in the van life in like tricking out the van and high tech gadgets and and all that stuff. But for for the people that were already doing living the life before they had that vehicle, you know, it's really all about functionality and just getting to go do the things that you want to do. Van life isn't the thing that I want to do, it's the thing that lets me do the things I want to do. That was kind of wordy. Tell us what's going on back here. It's a truck, right? And you just scroll through Craigslist long enough and you know, wait it out, you'll find a camper shell for you know, less than $500. And it's got this higher top right here so that I can sit up a little higher when I'm in the bed. I did notice that. Starts low, gets high. So he's got a two lead bike rack that can lay down which gives him access to the back of the truck, which is super important. Got his bike on here and cowboy boots hung up. That's very authentic. All right, so what we got going on inside? So inside, uh, we got some handy dandy little string lights that we got at Walmart for like five dollars. Oh got cool, I didn't even know that. Party modes in here. That's like the main lights we use, but if you need more light, you've got the basic press buttons that you get at Home Depot. Do you have a separate battery to power all that? No, no, these are all like battery powered and I have like a stash of batteries right here for everything that I keep. Oh, cool. So I've got all my batteries just stored back here. And then uh, I wanted something that I could like take in and out of the truck. Like, so right. if my 
you know, girlfriend needs to move and I need to help her move some furniture. I wanted to be able to take the whole thing out. Oh, so, this is all modular, right? Yeah, yeah. So like the, there's three pieces here, basically. It's these two side pieces are identical. And then this center piece right here actually can come up and slide out if I want it to. And I can drop it down and I have like the full height of the truck. So. Oh, you can take it off of this little ledge and yeah. put it underneath here? Yeah. That's yeah. sick, and dude. I can... So you can actually still use it as a truck. Yeah, I can still use it as a truck. And then that also allows me to lock these up. So I've got these little things on the tailgate here, these little shed locks, and I can lock that Oh, so you up. can keep safe, stuff safe yeah, underneath. Yeah, so now I, you can't open the tailgate and get anything out. So if I'm on a three-day backpacking trip and uh -huh. the truck's parked in the trailhead, I don't have to worry about someone busting into the back of my truck. This is really well thought out. You built all this yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, you spend maybe $50 on plywood at Home Depot and... Uh, I've got parents that have tools, but even not like you can buy a cheap table saw. I did this all right. with like a, a hand saw and like a drill and that was it. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, That's so cool. Um, underneath all my storage, got cold beers. Uh, Whoa, less less now than you had had yeah. last night. <laughs> <laughs> this is all my cooking setup. I've got all my like dry food. Uh, I appreciated that th this morning there. when we were eating because that's <laughs> basically the same Mooch. thing I do. Always keeping the food in this in like one container, you know, yeah. all your food stuffs. Yeah, it's it makes super it a lot handy. easier to like. I mean, that's the biggest thing with any car camping setup is staying organized, right? right? And that's what I wanted out of this. I wanted to be able to have modular components I could take in and out and put back. And so that's all just tied up so that it doesn't come off and slide to the front of the bed. Cool. Uh, bike gear, clothes are in a suitcase back there. That's actually a super important for anyone that doesn't, this type of bag is really, really good for on the road because you can keep something organized, but also let it dry and breathe and yeah. not get insanely sure. stinky inside of a waterproof, you know, duffel. Especially if you're in the Southeast. Speaking of like temperature, uh, I've got the Reflectix here and it's just Velcroed to the windows. I cut it all out and like put it in all the windows. So like last night it probably got down to what, like 40, 35, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it, it was under 40 for sure. Yeah. And but for people that don't know, what is Reflectix? Reflectix is just like this bubble wrap basically that they put tin foil on both sides of. And uh, it's like this radiant reflective heating. So like it, it it keeps my body heat inside the truck rather right. than letting it all come out through the windows. Most uh, van setups will have two, like you'll see the same two layers on all of them. You'll have a yeah. deadener, which is to keep the van from rattling. And then you'll have a layer of Reflectix to uh, help start insulating. Up at the front, I got like a little shelf there. That's where like, you know, the wallet. And oh, I didn't even notice hat that. And stuff go. I've got a fan mounted up there that is not optimal, but it works. And uh, yeah, it's, it, the fan is important because you'll see right now there's still like condensation on the roof from sleeping in it last night right and when you have like you and a girlfriend in here like breathing <laughs> it gets really really wet in there <laughs> just from like your breath condensating on the roof so um, I've seen guys put like carpet up here right to help that kind of help. absorb some of that so it's not dripping on you in the night but yeah uh, so when it's just being by myself it's not bad you've got the reflectix all the way down in there yeah it's super spacious in here to be honest yeah yeah and the the tapered roof is really helpful you know i put my feet down at that end where it's lower right and my head goes up here so i can actually sit up and like get sort of dressed in here yeah before i climb out into the cold weather that is nice i've also got these bike mounts here. i saw that so when i'm in like a city or something and i don't feel comfortable leaving my bike like outside even with a lock on it you yeah know, on this rack it's still like someone can come up clip that lock yeah that lock ain't away. nothing in Atlanta, but if they dude. can't even see the bike and it's in here that's a way better deal right so i drop this down and i can slide the bike in there uh, oh right because it's really nice like this whole thing you know since it like lifts up and slides yep. out i can like slide it out put my bike on it slide it back in it's that's like a sick big drawer um, so you can have you can have people inside you can have bikes inside and then underneath is all the things that you need. What's in the far left pocket? Like, this is just like the catch-all. This is like fly fishing stuff and batteries and dirty clothes. And okay. Then over here is usually water. I've got my bike tools there. I was about to ask where you have bike tools. Yep. So I keep all my bike stuff there. And then like, I've got cubbies on the sides. So oh, neat. I've got all these little cubbies there. I think that one's empty. It's got like- Just for easier access into the deep areas. Stuff. Yeah, well- That's super important. Stuff like first aid kits, like the big medical first aid kits. I keep right. in there. Um, and then you have a second one back there. Yeah, I've got three on each side. 
If I could redo anything, it would probably be this. I would make them a little bigger so that I could fit bigger items through that little hole. That's the stuff that I'm not gonna touch every day, so I put it all up there. Yeah. I wanted it to be, like if I wanted to turn this truck back into a normal truck in four hours, I could totally do that. I could yeah. take this off, take all this out. I mean, this wood stuff, like the only thing that's holding this to the bed is this little hinge right here. Really? Yeah, you pull that screw out, flip that up, and then you pull all of this out. You can just take all the wood out. Yep. Tell us about your bed here. Oh, this bed. Because you were, yeah, you were pretty stoked on it. It is the best. You made me jealous as I was getting <laughs> into my tent last night. It is the best $150 I ever spent. It's a four inch memory foam mattress topper that you, I bought it at Target. And then you just bought some cheap sheets. Super, super comfy. So it's more comfortable than my bed at home. Like I look forward to sleeping in here more than sleeping in my own bed. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that, What's happening in here right now is the beauty of having <laughs> a, a permanent setup. Yeah. So after I finish filming this video, I have to go take down my tent and I have to fold up my Paco pad. I've already packed out my sleeping bag. Daniel doesn't have to do anything. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's what's so cool. And he was, we were talking about it last night when we pulled in, you know, I have to stop and set up things before we go to uh, eat but he just has to park. And he said, you know, during the trip out west, that was amazingly yeah. convenient. Yeah, we use freecampsites.net. And I love I that mean, site. Yeah, you find <coughs> campsites that are beautiful that you would never have seen otherwise, right? So we would just be like, all right, we're feeling pretty tired. Freecampsites.net, find the closest one. Park, hop in. Park, jump in so park. cool, so convenient. So tell me this, how much do you think this cost you? Uh, camper shell included. It maybe cost me like four hundred dollars. That's amazing. And That's the camper so cool. Shell was two hundred fifty or three hundred of that. That's so insane. Yeah. And the the bike rack's expensive, but most people are gonna have a bike rack anyway. Right? Yeah. No, I mean that's amazing. So you know, for it's it's an I think it's an amazing option. You everyone has seen Seth starting to make his build. Uh, for people that already have trucks, for people that are going out and doing the weekend warrior trips that working on nine to five during the week and then want to maximize the weekends. I really think that this is an amazing setup. You know, you don't have to have an actual van that's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and months of prep work to create, to, to go out and have these adventures. You really don't. Any advice for someone that is looking to do it? Just go. Just do it. Yeah, like because you you actually find you a way did to make it work. Yeah, right? you did a lot of research on van life, and I remember you mulling over what you were gonna do with yeah. your Jeep before all this, yeah. and then finally you just you just bought this top and did it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's so much easier than you ever think that it would be, and like, don't be afraid of not being handy. Like, this is literally plywood. Um, you can look up videos on how to make this kind of stuff. I stole this from uh, I think it's desk to dirt bag yeah so he was like an office that's cool. guy same thing like same situation he had an office job he needed to get out and so i would just copy his design and then put like little improvements where i wanted to uh -huh. you know customize it to you are there any downsides that you know that you can think of uh i mean versus van life there's no not versus there, van life like, just any downsides to this uh not really i mean i i really enjoy it the worst thing is maybe like if it's raining and i need to cook Okay, I that's, can see that. That's a hard part, but worse that might worse, be one thing the tent like has above you, because I can actually cook in a vestibule. Well, I can drop that down. I've got the full height. Oh, and, and you could cook, cook right. right. Oh yeah. Yeah, like worst comes to worst, I can do it, but it's just like a lot of moving pieces. Right. right. Pull everything out from underneath and put it up top. And, yeah, I think that might be. Yeah. So when you're working in when you're working in in smaller spaces, moving around, moving things around is just a little bit more difficult. You know, mm -hmm. the, the less space you have to work with, the more particular you have to be about where things go, and the harder it is to access things. Yeah. Like, I'm like you can definitely fit enough, like enough things that you need but it, they're gonna be harder to get to, which is why the um, the way you access space is so important, like those little holes in the side. Yeah. It's just how do you get to them you know, easily? How do you get to the stuff that is all the way in the back underneath? So my trick for that is the hooker. Whoa, when were you gonna tell me about this? What Stick is this? the hook on the end, dude. You just reach way back <laughs> What? There, grab onto whatever you need and pull out. <laughs> Pull that out. No way. She's a good hooker. How long have you had? How long have you uh, had the need for that? Like, when did you decide first you needed to come I up with that? Underneath that thing to get like a shoe <laughs> from the very front. Oh like, my gosh. Faye, I need a hooker. She's like, that's, what? That's freaking gold, dude. And there it is. And, and where is that? That those lives down there. Right here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, now you're gonna need a hooker for your hooker. You threw. No, nah, it can't back. go back too far. 
Well, uh, I really appreciate you giving us the tour of, uh, of the truck. I hope you guys have been enjoying these, these alternative living adventure mobile tours as much as I have. I love seeing everyone's different setup, uh, what they use it for, and it's always just encouraging to hear how easy it is because for me personally, it's a, it just feels very daunting. And uh, to, to just hear from someone that the most important thing is to just get at it, just start it, is uh, pretty encouraging. And this sort of setup goes to show that you don't need much. You know, if you got a truck, you're good to go. Yeah, thanks for the tour, dude. No problem, dude. And it's time for us to go ride. The next video is going to be a riding video at Windrock. And um, I assure you, it is going to be rad because Windrock is ridiculous. This is his first time here. Until then, you guys know what to do. Live free, ride hard, and get stoked. stoked. Phew!